When France fell in June 1940, almost 2 million French soldiers marched into captivity. Marshal Pétain's new Vichy government was allowed to keep an army of 100,000 volunteers, but the Navy's ships could not leave their ports, while the Air Force was grounded. The original plan was to fully disband the Air Force, but when hostilities broke out between Britain and France, Hitler changed his mind and allowed the existence of an armistice Air Force. In this video, I will go through each theater where Vichy French airplanes participated in the fighting. During the Battle of France, the Luftwaffe lost 1,200 planes, while French losses were above 2,200. However, the French aircraft industry, which was late to modernize and increase the size of the Air Force, delivered another 1,100 airplanes, and production continued even after the armistice, partly to satisfy German demand. Certain models that had been scarcely available, like the Devoatem D520, were now supplied in sufficient quantities, while most of the newly purchased American planes, such as the Curtis Hawk 75 fighters and the DB7 and Glenn Martin Maryland bombers, were still serviceable. At the same time, the various colonial units were untouched, so Vichy France could still rely on a sizable fleet to respond to foreign threats. Pétain's government didn't have to wait long for such threats, as Winston Churchill quickly authorized Operation Catapult to prevent French capital ships from falling into German hands. Since several battleships and battlecruisers were stationed in North and West Africa, the Royal Navy, together with a token Free French Force, sailed with orders to either escort these capital ships to distant ports or to destroy them. In July 1940, fighting broke out between the British and French ships at Mersal Kabir near Oran in Algeria. The French vessels were in port, they could not respond with effective fire, so the battleship Provence sank, Bretagne exploded, while the battlecruiser Strasbourg was damaged. Almost 1,300 French sailors died in this clash, but the British did not achieve complete success, as French D-520 and Curtis Hawk fighters chased away their swordfish torpedo bombers. A few British planes were lost, and the next day, French bombers attacked Gibraltar, causing no damage. Clashes continued. On the 8th of July, swordfish torpedo bombers from the carrier HMS Hermes targeted the battleship Richelieu at Dakar, which managed to get away. Ten days later, Gibraltar was attacked again by around 40 French bombers, but while sporadic fighting continued, the intensity of these clashes decreased. In late August and early September, New Caledonia, along with most of French Equatorial Africa, sided with Charles de Gaulle's Free French Movement, changing the situation. The British government hoped that more French colonies could be convinced to follow suit, so another joint force was sent to Dakar in West Africa, but the local commanders remained loyal to Vichy. The Army de l'Air de l'Armistice still had more than 600 planes available in North and West Africa, so they could send reinforcements. Operation Menace therefore went badly, Coastal defense was supported by Curtis Hawk fighters and Glenn Martin bombers, who engaged the Swordfish torpedo bombers and Fulmer fighters of HMS Ark Royal, and also attacked the British ships themselves. Eleven British planes were lost, in exchange for a single Curtis Hawk. The next day, 64 Vichy aircraft attacked Gibraltar again, with 18 Leo 451, 27 Douglas DB-7, and 19 Glen Martin Maryland bombers, mostly from Morocco. They were escorted by 12 D-520 and 24 Curtis Hawk fighters, but no opposition was to be found. The fortress, the docks, and a few ships were hit, with no losses on the French side. The next day, 83 bombers repeated the mission, losing a single plane to anti-aircraft fire and sinking HMS Stella Sirius. This was the largest bombing mission of the French air forces in World War II, but once the British retreated from Dakar, 
no further clashes took place. In December 1940, a secret agreement was signed to maintain the colonial status quo, concluding the fighting for now. In the Far East, Japan was eyeing Indochina, which had a small French force present. In September 1940, clashes broke out between the two sides, and after some losses, an agreement was signed so Japanese forces could occupy all key cities. However, in December, Thailand, the country of Siam, also attacked to recover previously lost lands. Using Japanese KI-43 Hayabusa and KI-27 Nate and American Curtis Hawk, Hawk 111 and Walt Corsair V-100 fighters, they engaged outdated French aircraft, losing two planes. However, in January 1941, Japan forced both sides to cease hostilities. The next British target was Syria and Lebanon, after suppressing an anti-British Iraqi revolt in mid-1941. This revolt threatened the vital oil supply that fed British 8th Army in Egypt, which is why the Luftwaffe sent Messerschmitt Bf 110 heavy fighters, Junkers Ju-52 transport planes and Heinkel HE-111 bombers to Iraq, followed by Italian Fiat CR-42 fighters. The situation was at first chaotic, since the Germans did not ask for permission to use Syrian airspace, Vichy French Moran Saulnier MS-406 fighters clashed with the German planes, then worked with them against the Royal Air Force in Iraq and Syria. By the end of May, the Iraqi revolt failed, so Syria itself became the center of operations. The RAF and the Royal Australian Air Force fought against the slightly outdated MS-406 fighters, Glenn Martin bombers, and Potez 6311 recon planes. The British Gloucester Gladiator, Ferry Fulmer, and Hawker Hurricane fighters were also not modern, but the Australian unit had just converted to the P-40 Tomahawk, so the Vichy government sent the 520 fighters along with destroyers and cruisers as reinforcements. In total, 159 Vichy fighters were concentrated here with experienced pilots. One of them was Lieutenant Pierre Leclone, who eventually had 18 kills next to his name, 4 German, 7 Italian, and 4 British. Still, due to the naval blockade, no further supplies could be sent. By early July, the situation became untenable, even though only about two dozen planes were lost in combat. The rest were destroyed on the ground. Some planes were taken over by the Free French once the area was secured. In May 1942, HMS Illustrious and HMS Indomitable raided Madagascar with F4F Wildcats, Sea Hurricane and Ferry Fulmer fighters, along with Albacore and Swordfish torpedo bombers. A few Potes 25 and MS-406 planes were shot down, and since resupply from France was impossible due to the huge distance, by September the entire island was in British hands. The most serious fighting took place in November of that year, when Operation Torch commenced. Vichy French forces resisted the Allied invasion both in Morocco and in Algeria, with 86 fighters and 78 bombers. The American F-4F Wildcat fighters and SPD Dauntless dive bombers encountered the now familiar models, which were becoming obsolete but were still flown by experienced pilots. The battleship Jean Bart was damaged, several French bombers were destroyed on the ground, while D-520 fighters destroyed three C-47 transports that were carrying paratroopers. More fighting followed, British Spitfire fighters and Albacore bombers destroyed three D-520s, while the Wildcats downed three DB-7s that were attacking the carrier USS Ranger. Clashes continued for four days over Casablanca. Both sides suffered losses, but more and more French planes were destroyed on the ground. By the 10th of November, more French planes arrived in Tunis, along with the first German units. More losses followed, so French fighter and bomber squadrons were running out of planes, but on the 14th of November, Admiral Darlan, 
and General Eisenhower signed a truce. Darlan was assassinated at the end of the month. He was then replaced by General Giraud, who was also commander of all three French forces. When Germany occupied the rest of France on the 27th of November, all remaining Vichy French forces were disbanded, and most of the Navy's ships in Toulon were scuttled, which convinced many French soldiers, sailors and airmen to switch sides. Still, it would take them almost two more years to finally liberate metropolitan France, together with the Allied forces.